The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Who among you would say to your slave who has just come in from plowing or tending sheep in the field, come here at once and take your place at the table? Would you not rather say to him, prepare supper for me, put on your apron and serve me while I eat and drink? Later you may eat and drink. Do you thank the slave for doing what was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Good morning, again. <laughs> it is so good to be back here with you all. I um, was last here on Easter morning, and so when I pray for you at St. Matthew's, I think of you as an Easter people, a resurrection people, people who see possibilities instead of impossibility, who aren't afraid to take risks to do God's work in the world. And it's refreshing to be back here in this community because it's an oasis. It's rare that we hear about people coming together in love and the power of that. Instead, one month out from the election, we're bombarded with a message of division and scarcity, less and more. Whoever has the most wins. The less your candidate is liked, the more votes we get. There are finite resources in this world, and the more you have, that means less for me. In the midst of this polarized, divisive climate, we might cry with the apostles, increase our faith. The apostles have just, just been told that if somebody offends them seven times in one day and repents, they have to forgive them seven times. And they say, we do not have the resources for that. <laughs> Give us more faith. And Jesus says, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. What is Jesus talking about? This passage reminds me of a scene from the 1980 Star Wars movie, The Empire Strikes Back. In it, the young hero Luke Skywalker has gone to visit the Jedi Master Yoda on his swampy planet. Now, Yoda is small, green, and old. And so when he gets there, Luke's X-Wing, which is his spaceship, and his only way off the planet, sinks deep into the swamp. And Yoda suggests, use the Force to get it out. So Luke like the Apostle Peter trying to walk on water, concentrates with all his might and manages to get the X-wing up just a little bit before he gives up and it sinks all the way back down. And he says, I can't, it's too big. And Yoda says, size matters not. Judge me by my size, do you? You should not. For, the ally, for my ally is the force and a powerful ally it is. Luke says, you want the impossible. Yoda closes his eyes bows his head and raises his hand and slowly the X-wing comes up out of the swamp and he guides it to dry land. Luke says, I don't believe it. And Yoda says, that's why you fail. Now this scene is rich on many levels. Luke thinks quantitatively. He sees that Yoda is old and small so he underestimates his strength. He sees that the X-wing is big so he can't lift it up. And I understand why Luke gets discouraged. He sizes up what he's supposed to do with the laws of gravity and with the reality of his own strength. And he says, I just can't. And I do this all the time. I'm always saying, I need more resources, more time, more energy to do whatever you're calling me to do, God. And we are, like Luke, taught to think quantitatively in this world. More is better, and I don't have enough. But Jesus says faith doesn't work that way. There is no more or less in matters of faith. One small prayer, help my unbelief, can open up the floodgates. Faith is not something to work at. It's a gift to return to. It's a way of seeing the world beyond the quantitative, believing in God's power to break through the way things are. And such kingdom thinking requires us to take chances. We have to set aside the measurements of this world to decide what's worth doing, what's worth trying. Jesus does this all the time. 
He takes people that the world considers less than and is sized up as not good enough, and he lifts them up. And he, while other people look on in scorn, he tells the friends of the paralyzed man who have lowered him through the roof in a crowded room, good job. And he praises the woman who's been hemorrhaging for 12 years and who finally works up the courage to touch the hem of his cloak. Your faith has made you well. And then he also welcomes the sinner who washes his feet with her tears and dries them with her hair. Faith is not some magic power to get us more of what we want. From the moment he calls the apostles, Jesus demands the seeming impossible from them. Love your enemies. Forgive. Give. Love. Serve. Just before he dies, Jesus tells Peter and the apostles, Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. And I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. But once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. Jesus knows the apostles are going to fail. They're not going to get what they want. He suffers and dies. And do they stick with him? No. <laughs> they abandon him and deny him. But the risen Christ lifts them up out of the mire and gives them power to become servants and children of God. And he does the same thing for us. He knows that our faith will fail, but he lifts us up and gives us power to do good in the world. Now, Jesus does not choose us because of our great strength or potential. Like all of his followers, we are among the weak, those who are not able to rely on our own strength. And in the life of faith, Jesus doesn't train us to lift up spaceships out of the swamp. He trains us to move obstacles of another kind, obstacles of hatred, resentment, obstacles of injury. Faith is not a quantity of something we can get more of to solve life's problems, the world's problems, the country's problems, or the church's problems. It's a reminder that God is in charge, and he empowers us to do what he's called us to do. And Jesus allows us to take the first step, even when it seems like one step won't make any difference. I recently attended a Habitat for Humanity ceremony where they gave the keys to the new people who got the houses. They were solar-powered homes. And the site manager said, we got here one small step at a time. Our volunteer motto is give a dollar, give an hour. The most moving part of the ceremony was when we heard from the people who got the houses. One of them was a Muslim woman who took care of her elderly mother and her disabled sister. And she wept as she thanked the church's volunteers and all the people who'd helped her nail and paint and caulk that house. And she said, you are my family. The other new house owner was one that was from Somalia. And he was also a Muslim and a young father. And he turned to some neighbors who had just given him a housewarming gift. And he said, thank you for welcoming us. We've moved three times in the last two years because of poor quality housing and because the rent kept going up. And now after two years of working every Saturday, our dream has come true. Our doors are always open to you. Please come have tea with us. Teach us how to be homeowners. And as he talked, his one-year-old, five-year-old, and six-year-old danced around, eager to show all of us their new rooms and their new homes. In a climate where people different from us are threats, where less for you means more for me, we are called to build up God's kingdom. And opening the size of a mustard seed is enough for God to break through to us. So once we take that first tentative step, we find within us the resources to give, forgive, serve, and love. When the world claims to have no room for the least of these, we say nothing is impossible with God. So I invite you, if you haven't already gotten one, to take one of those mustard seeds from that bowl in the back. If you lose it, don't worry, because God knows what to do with it. <laughs> and let it be a reminder that size does not matter to God. He can work with even two minutes of our not rushing to the next thing. With a deep breath instead of a hurled insult. With a small step instead of an ambitious plan. With a small kindness to someone in need. We are an Easter people. So let us go forth with joy and courage. If we have faith the size of a mustard seed, God can do infinitely more in us than we can ask or imagine. Amen.